I don't know, again, I rather suspect that most viewers will be only too familiar with the Tavistock Clinic, where for years mental health professionals have been striving to turn little boys into girls and girls into boys. This was a curious, not to say deeply wrong, enterprise, and the brakes have now been applied to the Tavistock, as their enthusiasm for sex changes really did seem to be getting a bit out of control. Something which is often observed is that if a person believes one loopy idea, then they are more likely to subscribe to others and to be generally gullible. For example, somebody who believes in the Loch Ness Monster is more likely than the average person to believe too in the Abominable Snowman. Or flying saucers, communicating with the dead, and all sorts of other strange uh, concepts. The same principle holds true in fields such as psychiatry and psychotherapy. If you believe that people can be born into the wrong body, so a biological male is, despite all the evidence to the contrary, really a woman, then you're likely to believe other crackpot ideas as well, such as that it is okay for middle-aged men to have sex with children, or that whiteness is a problem for our times. These are just two examples of this tendency to gullibility at the Tavistock Clinic. There are many others. A week ago, one of the senior psychologists at the Tavistock, 53-year-old Ross Kennard, was convicted of attempting to meet a child following sexual grooming. He was given a suspended prison sentence. When a man in his 50s feels that it's okay to arrange to have sex in a park with a child, he certainly subscribes to views which are, to say the least of it, outside mainstream thinking and running counter to the mores of our society. You see what I mean? Spending all that time working at a place where sex changes were being planned has had the effect of skewing this fellow's perspectives so that he will believe anything, even something quite wicked. Another professional connected with the Tavistock was a psychologist called Helen Morgan. A few years ago, she held a seminar at the Tavistock called Whiteness, a Problem for Our Times. This was, we are told by the website for the Tavistock, an examination of white privilege and white fragility from a psychoanalytic perspective. This presentation is rooted in the assumption that the problem of racism is a problem of whiteness, and that an examination of this construct of whiteness needs to be central to seeking a solution to this destructive dynamic. A key and urgent question then for those of us who are regarded as white is how do we interrogate our whiteness to bring about the radical change that is required? I give a link to a recording of this entire seminar and unbelievably odd it is too. The thesis is of course that only white people can be racist. The next time you hear a black Muslim describing white people as white devils bleached demons or cave monsters, remember that that's not actually racism, for only white people can be racist. The same goes for um, if you should happen to overhear an Indian speaking in a disparaging way about people from Africa, or a black person describing somebody from Indian subcontinent in a derogatory way, that's not racism, only white people can be racist. Much of this seminar is couched in bizarre language which might suit an avant-garde novel. Here's a sample. Whiteness implies purity and allows no contamination, no tincture, or it ceases to be white. We are whitewashed, drained of our colours, and all imperfections are located elsewhere. The creation of whiteness forces blackness into existence and turns distinctions of shades into oppositions, since white cannot allow darkness to exist within itself, shadows must be rejected and cast into what is deemed to be black. Hand on heart, does anybody think that sounds like science? Like doctors and psychologists talking? 
Or does it sound like, I hesitate to use the word loony, for that would be inappropriate and offensive. But does it sound a little strange? No wonder people who, who are in the habit of talking to each other like that are able to believe so readily that castrating young men and giving them a bunch of hormones will actually turn them into girls. As usual in the description to this video, I give links to the uh, subjects about which I've been talking.